Next, if you're a member of a certain group who has been persecuted, does it stand to reason you'd be more sensitive to other groups who have been persecuted? Mumbo, that's not, that's a very interesting question. The nickname of the professional football team in the nation's capital is a racial slur. It's worse than Mick to an Irishman, or Polak to a Pole, or Spick to a Mexican, or Kike to a Jew, or Kraut to a German, or the fight-inducing nigger to an African American. The owner of the team is Jewish. It's not a question of whether or not that's appropriate to name a team after a racial slur. I think that's a, that's a given. But should he be more sensitive to the plight of other people in a similar situation? Man, what do you got against Jews? <laughs> <laughs> he could be Armenian, Tutsi, East Timorian, Cambodian under Pol Pot, or any group that's been killed towards genocide. That's the question. Should he be more sensitive to other people in a similar situation? The owner inherited the team's name when he bought the team, so he's under no obligation to change the name. Think about all the licensing and merchandising money they'd lose. The Washington Bullets changed their name to the Wizards in order to escape the association of bullets to crime in the D.C. area. Yeah. Nobody forced that change. That's because the Washington Bullets fucking sucked. <laughs> I mean, seriously, nobody cared. Like, aside from John Wall, that team sucks for like 35 years. <laughs> So it's all about success and, and money. Yeah. If that's the case, then they should have changed their nickname between 1956 and 1968 before Lombardi got there and later George Allen when they had not a one winning season. Well, yeah, but I mean, didn't they do like a poll or a survey of Indians and found out that the whole name thing really wasn't a big deal? Look, if you target the right people and you frame the question a certain way, you can get anybody to say anything that you want to hear. Right. The nickname is because of the red clay they put on their faces before battle. <laughs> What's wrong with that? What? <laughs> nice try. <laughs> How about the scalps a white man got for killing Indians for money? So they didn't have the burden of bringing back the entire head. They just brought back the scalps. The red skins of the scalps. Oh my god, Mambo, who cares? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, it's not even about your group. What are you doing? <laughs> You're Irish, right? Yeah. Brett Favre and the Minnesota Mix. Uh, the purple people eaters of the Minnesota Mix. Chris Carter started his career in Philadelphia, but he ended up playing for the Minnesota Mix. Imagine hearing that constantly for six months and 24-7 on Sundays. Might cut into your self-esteem. No, 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 but that Redskins nickname was to honor the bravery and the dignity of the Native Americans. The owner, George Preston Marshall, uh, paid homage to um, William, what was it? Lone Star. Uh, Lone Star. William Lone Star Dietz, a Native American who was the coach of the team at the time. <laughs> now, I doubt if Dietz had the power to keep Marshall from calling the team something offensive. And Marshall changed the name of the team because they had the same name as the Boston Braves baseball team when the football team was still in Boston. Liberal, <laughs> I guess. Do you expect me to believe that George Preston Marshall who didn't have his first black on the team until 1962, Bobby Mitchell, though the league integrated in 1948, was sensitive to the plight of numerical racial minorities, can you? <laughs> you got me, you got okay. Yeah, right, I got you. Sure you can. He no like him black man, but he sure like him red man, as long as he could call him red niggers. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Hail to the niggers! What? Uh, Hail for victory! Niggers on the warpath, fight for old DC. Hunter, what's wrong? Aren't you curious why I use the word nigger in there opposed to any other word? I do, Falone. Please tell me. Because you're a white trash peckerwood racist? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you jump at any and every opportunity to say the N word after you got that NWA decoder ring a couple of years ago in the Wheaties box. Yeah. No, I don't think he's necessarily racist. Well, you would know better than I, obviously. <laughs> but you need a two-syllable slur to fit into that song. Or two one-syllable slurs. Well, in that case... Oh, 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 here we go. 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 Hail to the Dagos. <laughs> Hail victory. Dagos on the warpath. Fight for old DC. Dagos. <laughs> you created a racial slurring monster. Well, they're not quite getting it, but uh, it's close enough. <laughs> how about uh, Hail to the Polacks. Hail, Hail victory. <laughs> Polacks on the warpath. Fight for old DC. There's got to be more. Hail 
to the wetbacks. Hail victory! <laughs> it's on the wetback! Fight for OTC! They always get it, man. Who oh, didn't we racially slur right now? Um, hail to the... Uh, uh, gooks and kooks. Hail, hail victory! <laughs> gooks and kooks of the warpath! Fight for old DC! That's kind of hard to say. Like, uh, <laughs> hail to the... Uh, chinks and zip. Mm. What? Hail <laughs> victory! <laughs> chinks, chinks and zips of the warpath! Fight for old DC! That's even harder to say. That's <laughs> it's tough, but whatever. We made it work. That's offensive. <laughs> What's new? What about you? I know you got something. Camer <laughs> Hail victory! Camel Jack to the war map! Fight for all DC! You gotta have something, I know you do. Lanny's! <laughs> Hail victory! <laughs> Lanny's on the war map! Fight for all DC! What the fuck is the the Prime Minister and I object most vociferously for using the term limey as a means of differentiating your sports teams. After all, our country colonized most of you for many, many years and would have continued to do so had we not joined up with those wacky United Staters in an ill-fated attempt of seizing all of Haji's oil. <laughs> I mean, liberating the Iraqi people. <laughs> we shall not do any fighting for old DC. We tried that, didn't get south of Baltimore, <laughs> where some off-key lawyer wrote your national anthem. And that would be Francis Scott Key. I knew you were a queen. <laughs> <laughs> Hail to the queen! Hail Hail to the queen. To the queen. <laughs> and where do we go from here? Straight to hell. <laughs> <laughs>